Hey everyone, this is Lucky70x, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. In the last episode, we took on Maze Island, explored the Northeastern Sea, and it took us forever and a half. And we'd also discovered we can't make it to the islands of Isle of the Runes. So we're heading to the Isle of the Dead instead, and, uh, to find some clues about this sea. And what we can do to get the final pure metal that we're looking for. As you can see, not quite as simple as the first few. Uh, we actually have quite a bit of things to do before we can get the, uh... The third and final one. As expected, I mean, it is it is the third and final one, and essentially the final dungeon of the game. They're not going to make it an easy walk of the park to get to, that's for sure. So we have to make our way around here. Unfortunately, I'm fairly sure we're going to encounter some pirates on the way, so I might make a pit stop to get the pirate's treasure. We're also apparently going to encounter sharks for all about two seconds. The enemies in this sea are really, really finicky, I've noticed. Like, they'll show up for two seconds, and then they'll go away, and then another one will show up two seconds later, and it's just like, why do you keep doing this? Why can't you just be consistent? I don't know. That one's worth 20 rupees, though. Give it to me. Don't go away yet. There we go. We're all, all the way up to 6,000 once again. Uh, I've already checked BL again once again. Um, just assume at this point I check BL every time we start the video. I intend to basically get the golden parts from Beetle if at all possible. So, we can see those pirates in the sea. Are they going to notice us? It looks like they're not actually going to, which is fine with me, because right now, I don't really want to take the time to fight them. If there's time left over at the end of the video, maybe I'll fight them and get a free treasure piece, but really, at this point, we don't really need too much in terms of extra... I mean, it's an extra ship part, yeah, but there's no telling if it's going to be a golden one or not, and anything else I don't need anyway, so... We're not really going to waste our time too much of that unless we have to, so welcome to... A very fortressy looking island of all things. It's the Isle of the Dead. Very interesting area, and uh Well, we're gonna have to explore it today and see what comes of it. Tis the plan. And essentially it's just a bunch of uh different puzzles and situations. Oh my prize postcard looks like it's in! Oh, it's exciting! We're gonna go get the prize postcard, it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be awesome. Alright, so secrets hidden in the Isle of the Dead. Well, I mean, at some point, you kind of take on a graveyard-ish sort of area in Zelda game, so... I suppose we shouldn't be too surprised that we've made our way here now, so... Not much we can go, really, except for getting a, you know, our special postcard. Except into this cave, where we're going to learn more about what we're doing here. So, a letter for us! We've won a prize! It's a new car! Oh. Never mind. We didn't win anything. Rude. <laughs> this is a very long, uh... This is a really long you lose message. The loser prize. That's a ship part, at least. That's not terrible. So I guess you can keep putting these prize postcards and get ship parts or other prizes. I'm not sure what the other prizes would be. It's nothing of note, really. It's not like a heart container or a wisdom gem or something like that. It's nothing important or vital, so it's probably just money. Or, like, golden parts or something, which, golden parts, but, once again, RNG, so who cares. And you'd be better off just grinding ship parts off pirate ships and Temple of the Ocean King and whatnot. Anyway, there's a book here, so the fairy helper says it's important, we better go see what it says. It's the uh, Journal of the Obscene Explorer, Mickey, or McNay. I want to call him Mickey, it's funnier. I like to think of him as Mickey Mouse. Anyway, so, uh, normally on a map... This, yeah, directions. But uh, this map actually looks a bit different. If you look at the top screen, this island is shaped like the profile of someone wearing a crown. I'm not really sure what that really has to do with it, but it, I mean, it kind of looks like a person wearing a crown, I guess. If he's looking to the east. So you have like his eye and his mouth, and I mean, it, it's kind of relevant to the island, but to be perfectly honest, there really isn't much. So the treasure hidden in the room is planning to go to the temple in the northeastern corner, so that's clearly important. Uh, time to prove what was written in the article. By the way, this is about the Cobble Kingdom, an old uh, ancient kingdom that has since crumbled. Get it? Cobble? Now it's like all in runes. It's just kind of... it's, it's funny. So, uh... There's apparently a puzzle in the, the pyramid, and he's looking for the Aquanine, our third and final pyramid metal. Apparently it has something to do with the Cobble Kingdom. So, I guess we're gonna have to explore this island and learn more about what's going on with the Aquanine and the Cobble Kingdom. It's exactly what this island is. So we have a lot of uh, different information here. The Explorer, this is basically the Explorer's Compass, a magazine telling us about the uh, the Cobble Kingdom civilization. The co blah 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 Cobble Kingdom soared above all. It was glorious until it, so basically it's you know your usual super epic awesome city that mysteriously vanished. 
It's ruled by the king and four knights. Keep that in mind, that will be actually be quite important. I almost burnt your book, I'm sorry. So, uh, in rules of the law situation, the hidden treasures of the Aquanine, so a pure metal, which, which is apparently a part of an ancient civilization that doesn't exist anymore, so go figure, I suppose. So, only one of these pure metals in the world, I guess we can't fight it on eBay. Um, so, somewhere in the Cobble Kingdom. Is this even the Cobble Kingdom, though? That's the question. No one knows. Ancient mysteries that we have to solve today. Um, uh, so where did the Island of Dreams go? Okay, there's a tra we already know this. We already knew this. Apparently, okay, so apparently to find proof on the Isle of the Dead to reach the Cobble Kingdom. So that implies the Isle of the Cobble Kingdom, which makes sense, is in the Isle of the Runes. So we have to find proof on this island in order to be able to access the Isle of the Runes in the first place. So... Mysteries abound, guys! Mysteries abound. Oh, and this also hints at you about the, the location of Maze Island, so... That's cool. Uh, I mean, they always give you a hint of the, the little hidden islands. Now, here's another little thing. I'm not sure if this, the game ever tells you to go here at some point, but... There's a breakable wall over here that you can bomb. Which is really important because it actually has quite a few treasures and a Rupor maze! If you uh, end up walking in these Rupors, you'll pick it up and lose money, so... We're now in a risky maze where we have to avoid losing money by being very careful. Do not swing your sword around here because the backlash of hitting something will probably take you into something like this. Rupor for 50 rupees! Because yeah, you try to like attack something and- Oh, actually it's not because of the backlash, it's because you swing your sword and you grab the Rupors. So, ready your bow or- Actually, yeah, your bow, because the grappling hook would also pick up the Rupors. Uh, it's your best bet to take on the keys that are in this maze. Hug the wall. Avoid the big ones if you can, because they really cost you a lot of money. Stay in the corner. Just keep swiping until you kill. Wow. Okay. Focus here. Boosh. See, I can do it when I focus. Just not when I don't. Careful. That heart is tempting, but no, and I don't even need it. Luckily, we make up our money a little bit by a little reward room, and we're actually going to see quite a few reward rooms as we go throughout the uh, area here. And we get ourselves another tropical ship because we don't have like three of them already. And we also, that's not really worth too much money. But we also get a treasure map. So, a new treasure map has been found, always cool. Um, it's by the Isle of the Runes, so can't get to it quite yet. A current gem, which is always helpful. And, last but not least, we get ourselves another golden cannon. Okay, well that's 1500 rupees. I really need Beetle to start stocking up on golden parts. It's a really big shame that I just got a duplicate golden part though. I mean, 1,500 rupees, cool, but if I don't have golden ship parts to buy, I literally have no reason to be spending them anymore, and that's a problem. Okay, well, it's certainly better than the alternative, so I'll take it. I mean, no golden ship parts better than, you know... You know what? That's to you. Golden! Or great... Oh, God! Oh, God, he's eating my money. Luckily, he doesn't do too much damage to you. He just kind of eats your money, and you actually get it back if you kill him quickly, so... In the end, the leg legs are annoying, but as far as I've aware, I've never seen them eat my shield, which is kind of a thing. So, welcome to, uh, there's basically three different sections, or four different sections of this map. First of all, uh, the six sages rest in a graveyard. That being said, we can't get inside the graveyard now, but as you said here, oh, that's a bone. Don't throw your bone at me. Um, there. As it says here, those who don't know, the wisdom of the, of the six sages will never pass the phantom corridor. So, we need the sages in order to the corridor, but... You're in, you know what? I hate the skeletons, they're so annoying. They jump over your swords, you kind of have to be quick about it. Or just, you know, shoot them with the bow. But honestly, the Great Spin Attack is the best way to deal with it, because they can't jump over the Great Spin Attack, basically. So, once again, the Great Spin Attack is an incredibly useful thing. There's a thing on this pillar here, but we can't reach it unless we get up there. And there's really no reason to get way, way to get up there yet either. So lots of mysteries abound here, guys. In the, uh, you know what? Ha ha! Great. Somehow got interrupted. Spin attack. Well, whatever. We're just kind of train wrecking these stealthos. So there's a switch. There's just lots of things we can't access yet. We kind of have to slowly put the order together. There's also a light lake here. I know you're gonna do your sucky thing. Get out of here. At least the light likes are actually a pretty good source of money, because the ones here will usually have a blue rupee and a red rupee. And the rupee, the kind of rupee on them will determine how much money they steal pre, uh, to you per second. So, 
One of a red rupee on it will steal 20 rupees per second. You know, one of a blue rupee will steal five. That guy just jumped out of a tree. But that's okay. Jump attack seems surprisingly effective as well against them. So if you don't have the great spin attack yet, you can kind of just uh, catch them off guard like that and it works pretty well. So the only place we can really go to start with is this temple here. That being said, this temple is actually uh, the location of a of one of the things we've actually just learned about, which is the uh, resting. Okay, well, first of all, it's the resting place of the fourth knight, Brandt. So he's part of the Cobble Kingdom. Clearly important. He'll know something about the Aquanine. So we need to find a way to get to him. But this is where that Phantom Corridor is. We need the wisdom of the six sages to get past the Phantom Corridor. And in the end, it's actually your typical Zelda uh, puzzle, which you'll see. But then we get a second clue. A sacred tree on the king's chin, west 13, north 7. I'll explain what that means in a little bit, but if we try to go just head forward in here, you'll end up in the Phantom Corridor. You'll actually meet uh, our good friend Mickey here. Mickey Mouse, he's dead. Uh, the game killed him. So uh, he unfortunately could not solve the puzzle of the Phantom Corridor and died in the process because he got lost. Uh, essentially, it's your usual puzzle in a, a Zelda game where you have the infinite corridors and you have to go, you know, a certain route in order to get past, you know, you have to... It's like, you know, the end of Link's Awakening, or... I'm trying to think of another example, but they do it all the time where you have, like, the infinite corridors and you have to correct, choose the correct path in order to actually get anywhere, or, or else you'll just keep going in circles forever. Just that sort of deal, so if I just kind of, like, head up, I'll end up, you know, you end up in the same spot. If you head left, you'll end up in, you know, once again, the same spot. So... It's basically a giant maze. If you want to get out, you just head down and you'll make it out eventually. Just keep heading down and eventually you'll get out so you won't get lost forever. I don't know why Mickey figured that out but wasn't able to live, but hey, Mickey's just a silly guy who managed to get himself killed. R.I.P. Mickey. Okay, so now the other clue that we have to deal with, though, is the sacred tree that grows in the king's chin. As you see where um, this is below the mouth, this is basically the king's chin here. And it said West 13, North 7. They have these squares here, which will actually be the number you count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is here. And then you go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And right here, you dig. And right there is a, a hole. So once again, for, so for once we actually have a... A, you know, a hole that you have to find that's hidden that doesn't actually have any good indication. You actually have to solve that puzzle in order to get there. But then you end up down here. Ignore that noise from now. That'll be relevant soon. There is a bombable wall here, and I intend to bomb it, which we will. Because of there is rewards inside. I still can't believe we have a second golden cannon, by the way. Like, lots of money. So this part of the game really gives you money really quickly. You'll see next episode especially. We're going to get... Lots and lots of funds. That's not including the fact that we have, once again, a golden part to sell. So, making good money. You also get yourself a power gem here, which is awesome. So, uh, that's two gems. We're now at 18, 18, and 18 for all our gems, if you actually check the map. Uh, 18, 18, and 18. Two of each left to go. We also get a little bit of a hint here. Face west from the King's Eye and shoot an arrow. That'll be a, a thing, but we need to get to the King's Eye first. Because, uh, if you see on the top screen, he has an eye above his chin there, or above his mouth. So we need to get to that point. So that's the plan. I'm, I'm referencing the top screen a lot right now, which is going to be annoying, because that means I have to remember to add those in in editing. Oh well. Oh boy, that was an epic uh, boulder dodge. As you can see, with the dodge, lots of boulders. Get used to it. It's a very big theme of Cobble, of Cobble Kingdom traps. They like to use their boulders everywhere. It's kind of obnoxious, because there's nothing over in this corner. Kind of obnoxious, really, but... Get used to it, we're gonna have to do lots of boulder runs, essentially. But we make it out of the, uh, trap here. As you can see, we're heading up quite a lot of stairs, and we end up here, by the King's Eye. And there's also a treasure here, don't forget to get it, because it will be a second treasure map. I believe that's all the collectibles we're gonna actually be getting today, so two treasure maps and two gems. Not too shabby. By the way, in case you're wondering, you can actually jump into the King's Eye and drown, so don't do that. But anyway, head left from the King's Eye, like the thing said. And if you look at the arrow, that's where the switch was. You hit the switch, and the graveyard opens. So now you see what the, the chain of events is going to be here. We're going to head to the graveyard, get the Wisdom of the Six Sages, go to the Phantom Corridor, solve that puzzle, head into the temple, meet Brant, and go from there. So that's the game plan. The puzzle here, we read the, the gravestones. Each one of the sages will tell us a direction to go uh, in order to reach the end of the Phantom Corridor. So, um go north through the fourth room. So what we're going to do is, uh, 
I'm actually use letters here. We're gonna kind of write down all of the wisdom so we have the the path up above. So third sage says east through the third room. So this is three and four here. So in. Uh, what do you have to say, you guy over here? The second sage sage says go east through the second room. So we now have in. I really hope the first one's a west, so we can have ween. Nope, it's neen. Okay, so we now have this. We have only two more sages left to find, so uh, just keep checking all the gravestones. Some of them will have booby trap skeletons popping out of them, which will not have uh, any sort of sage associated with it, so this one's also apparently a trap. Um, indeed it is. And wow, the, all three of these are traps. That's just silly here. Apparently it's just the row of, oh no, okay, so I guess the skeletons could pop out of good ones too. Interesting. Wasn't aware of this. So we have Neen. I like how the letters are getting progressively larger as it goes on. And then the sixth sage, um, basically the, the sixth room is where Brant was laid to rest, so we only have five directions. Then this one's also just a, a, a dead grave, just a normal grave. Nothing exciting. Hey, money. All right, so we now know the path through the Phantom Corridor it has no wests or selfs. It is simply Neen. Indeed. Especially if you sit like that. That's the key to success right there, man. I'm telling you. It's just, well, men and or ladies. Gotta be politically correct, yo. Um, actually, I'm curious about something. Can you actually get behind this temple? Because these temples are, like, this is a weird shape now. Okay, there's just water behind the temple. Some of the, um, we'll see more of these temples later on. Some of them you actually get behind, which uh, can lead to some interesting things. So, wanted to quickly check that. Anyway, we're inside the temple here. We now know the correct path to get through. So we're going to go N. Hi, Mickey. East. Hi, Mickey again. Hope you don't mind me running past your corpse solving the puzzles because you were too lazy to go check a graveyard. You're a bad explorer. Hi, Mickey. Bye, Mickey. Um, so north, east, east, north. Hi, Mickey. Bye, Mickey. And then north. So easy puzzle. North, east, east, north, north. You get through the Phantom Corridor. You end up at the resting pl place of Brant, who, uh... Cabo Kingdom is apparently extremely Egyptian, and he's apparently has like he's apparently more like a pharaoh than a knight, but whatever. Um, so here we go. This is uh, the fourth knight, Brent. He's gonna teach us more about the Cabo Kingdom as we go. We have power, wisdom, and courage. Why are they with you? Well, some stuff's been going on while you've been dead, Mister. The Ocean King's kind of in trouble. We need that third pure metal. So uh, tell me, how do we get to this Cabo Kingdom? Because I kind of need the Aquanine, you know, because Basically, the Cabo Kingdom, uh, as we read in the history books, uh, they were very profitable under the Ocean King's rule, so they're very well allied with the Ocean King, so they want to help out the Ocean King, luckily. So we're looking for their king. King Muto has the Aquanine, um, so we need to explain the quest to him, etc., etc. Uh, we're going to head through the door and get the way to get to the Isle of the Runes, essentially, because we have proven our worth, we have a noble mission, but uh, the king's on the Isle of the Runes, essentially, and we need to get there. So we have there, we're now in the center part of the crown or whatever here. So uh, now that we're here, we head here, open this chest, and we get ourselves the Regal Necklace. A uh, mysterious necklace that will allow us, uh, well, as Brand's going to explain here, uh, Brant, I suppose. Um, king Moto isn't here. He's on the island, guarded by the rock wall, the Isle of Runes, as I explained. That's where the real Cobble Kingdom is. Uh, with this real necklace, though, we'll be able to... So basically, Brad's guarding the way to get to the Outer Ruins, essentially. And the other knights will guard other secrets once we get there, in case you're wondering. So uh, the regal necklace will allow us to get past the Cyclone and get to the Outer of the Ruins. And then there, he tells us to look for the third knight, Bremur. Bremur! Very, very French knight! Wasn't even close to being French, but whatever. I'm, I'm not very good at this. So you can actually just jump off the, over the gap here to get back down. And we have the Ringle Necklace, which means we now have the uh, final clues we need to get past the tornado and head to the Isle of the Runes. So actually, I can just jump down at this point. I really have no reason to, to stick around, so I won't. So uh, given that we have a little bit of extra time, we may as well go ahead and uh, I guess get past the tornado. Well, or I could just end the episode early, we can get past the tornado next time. I could also try to get to just kill the pirates over there, but there's really no reason to kill the pirates. So, I guess at this point we will, uh, yeah, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep the Isle of the Runes a secret. So what we're going to do 
is, uh, I guess end the episode here and call it a quicker episode for once. So, at this point, guys, it's Lucky7DX signing out in the next episode, guys. We head to the Isle of the Runes and uh, see if we can meet up with this Muto and get ourselves the final pure metal. Of course, you know it won't be that easy, but uh, that's the plan. So, because I just realized I don't have to fight the pirates anyway. I can just teleport to the thing, and that makes more sense. So, we'll be doing that next episode, guys, teleporting to the Golden fr Frog, heading through the tornado, heading to the Isle of the Runes. The Kabul Kingdom awaits us. What mysteries lie in store for us? We'll see you then. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.